Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, everyone watching us tonight. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to episode 17 of your favorite show, Hashtag LNT with your favorite man, Ahmed Ali. And we do welcome you to another live episode from the holy city of Karbala. Uh, and of course, I'm happy, I'm excited, I'm hyped for tonight's episode. Because honestly, tonight, uh, we're going to change the lives of many 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 people and trust me when i say that but tonight before we jump into uh what the topic is for tonight let's go check out what's popping and we'll be back in a few seconds so let's go so welcome back to your viewers inshallah uh that what's trending uh and we, we should we should have another one what's popping uh but yeah we can't throw a lot of jokes tonight uh, tonight, uh, you know, we have the red lights and I'm wearing black and a beige uh, tuxedo. So, you'll know why later when we get to talk about our today's episode, you'll know why. But anyways, what's trending for today? Now, Donald Trump has warned Russia in a tweet. So, now, uh, official warnings and official statements are being tweeted. Uh, they're not being uh, said through press, they're being tweeted. So. Alhamdulillah, we're, we're, we're improving. But for the, uh, he, he warned Russia uh, to get ready for U.S. missile strikes against uh, its ally Syria uh, due to the uh, chemical weapon attack on Saturday, who, uh, which killed almost 500 uh, civilians uh, close to Damascus, a town close to Damascus. Now, uh, Trump tweeted saying that get ready, Russia, because they will be coming nice and new and smart. You, should, you shouldn't be partners with a gas-killing animal who kills its people and enjoys it. Now, uh, the Russian foreign ministry, uh, they said that Damascus has neither the motive to use chemical weapons nor chemical weapons themselves. There is no proof for their use by Damascus, by Damascus meaning uh, Bashar Assad. Uh, so, uh, the, the Russian senior uh, parliament uh, want to see Assad uh, to check up on the situation or they're probably smuggling them out of the country uh, we never know but we'll get to see what the news has for us in later shows uh, or in, in later news but uh, what else is trending very special news for you guys today the construction of almost the biggest cruise ship uh, has just sailed from Barcelona Spain uh, on its initial voyage uh, around the Mediterranean now that's huge 1,188 feet long uh, and it's huge 2,759 cabinets 24 pools and 22 restaurants it's huge huge look at that that's beautiful we we, we need to go i need to take uh lnt crew uh, and go on that cruise you know uh either on my budget or on the budget of the channel we got to see we got to see what's good but check that out uh, whoever goes there, you need to take a selfie and send it to hashtag GNT because that's, that's beautiful. Anyways, anyways, anyways. That's it for what's trending today. Let's go check out what today's topic is. And trust me, you're going to like it. So there are consequences for almost everything we do. Uh, now, these consequences are either positive or negative, depending on the act that we commit or the act that we do. When a person does something good, uh, he is rewarded. You know, for example, you find like a, a lost dog and you bring it back to the owner. Uh, the reward you'll get uh, is either a thanks or a money reward, which actually happened to me once. Uh, I took the, the, the dog, it was our neighbor's dog, came into our backyard and then I took it back to the owner and he gave me like 20 bucks. I was like 14, 15 at, the, at that time. Uh, but anyways, that was, you know, just to throw that out. But anyways, so there are a lot of ways that you can be rewarded. We don't want to get through uh, all of them, but I mentioned too, either a thanks or it'll give you like five bucks or $10 or whatever. But anyhow, on the other hand, uh, there are negative consequences for the person who does something wrong. Now, and there are punishments depending uh, on uh, what they do. Uh, and, you know, it depends on uh, what they do. And for example, uh, if your children get bad grades, uh, he or she is either being grounded and wow, uh, you know, when, when uh, brown or black people see that, 
or hear that, uh, you know. And subhanAllah, the guy in the picture is white. He's not even brown nor, nor black because, uh, you know, uh, we don't get grounded. Uh, we get something else. Uh, astaghfirullah, we're not trying to throw any jokes out. But, you know, the, the kid, the, the boy gets his PlayStation taken away or the girl gets her phone uh, confiscated for a few days. You know, typical punishment, you know. What's so bad about that, you know? Children are happy, and they, and they ask why children are stubborn or why, why they act uh, in, in, in a different way. But uh, tonight, we're not talking about grounding your children or you know, confiscating your child's phone uh, temporarily. Uh, we're talking about incarceration. We're talking about those bars, those handcuffs, those bars right there. This guy probably regrets every moment in his life uh, for, 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 for getting back into but wow he's firmly holding the bars trying to break through although you know who breaks through we'll get to actually talk about that this guy broke the world record I will talk about it later but you know we're talking about uh, you know criminals aka convicts uh, who you know get to go to jail convicts go to jail and uh, depending on uh, the level uh, of uh, crime that they've done various uh, levels of crime that they've done the more severe typically the more severe the more time they get to spend uh, and less severe less time they get to spend uh, so bros I mean come on uh, sisters we don't find like, a lot of sisters going to jail but you know good advice don't be stupid you know give me give me, give me this camp give me this camp I have a message to send uh, don't be stupid please for the sake of God don't be stupid. Think twice before you do or say something. Because we don't want, you know, our, our brothers and sisters going to, go, going to jail. Uh, you know, we're trying to be jail free. Because uh, a lot of bad stuff does happen in jail. Just to throw it out there, we don't want to get into, we don't want to get into, you know, detail. Uh, but, yeah. Uh, why, why am I laughing today? It's not for a lot. Today is, uh, is, is a sorrowful day. But, um, jail and the inmates that go to jail have plenty of time to reflect on why they got there in the first place and trust me a lot of people they regret every second for them spending uh, or every second that they've uh, committed the crime um, when the sentence is over uh, the inmate the convict if you will uh, is released he, he, he's set free just like a bird uh, either you know for 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 a day or, or, or 10 years or, or life prison or you know, life prison you get to die but you know uh, so they, they but does the convict actually learn something from his imprisonment in other words is prison an effective punishment and that's your question for tonight the guys are on point today I love them is prison an effective punishment beautiful, beautiful. and the number is Pop right there. These guys are on point today. I'm telling you. Uh, plus nine six four seven seven four zero six seven eighteen thirty six. Now a lot of people might ask themselves, uh, yeah. Let me. Let, I'll give you a second to jot down that number. Yeah. Give me that cam right there. Give me. Give me. Give me. Give me that cam right there. A lot of people are asking. You know, we're showing the number at the the, the the question at the bottom and the number. What do you do with that? What do you do with that question? Is prison an effective punishment? So what you do with that question, uh, first you need to get the, the, your phone out, dial the number, plus 964774-067-1836, and before that you get to open WhatsApp, and then dial it in there. Uh, so when you do that, you give us a call, and you let us know what your opinion is on today's topic, which is, is prison an effective punishment? And I'll love you guys forever. Trust me when I say that. I love a lot of people. Um, but anyways, we'll go back. Tonight's question, is prison an effective punishment? All you got to do is pick up the phone down the number shown below and send us, or you can call, send us a voice or written message at the same number. You can even send us a snap uh, if, if, if you want. Uh, comment on our Facebook page because we are live on Facebook at Imam Hussein. 3TV or at hashtag LNT or at LNT.show uh, you can check out our live broadcast there leave a comment like share do all that good stuff the reactions give us the smiley with the hearts give us thumbs down no, no, no thumbs down thumbs up because tonight uh, you are about to learn a lot of things but before we get to learn a lot from the teacher 
we gotta take a short break and be back very short. Do stay tuned. So welcome back, dear viewers, and we do remind everyone that we are live in, from the holy city of Karbala. Uh, the guys are recording a time lapse for the show, uh, so shout out to uh, the cameraman uh, and the technician. But uh, tonight's show, to remind everyone, is prison an effective punishment? So what do you think? In your opinion, do you think that it is or do you think that it isn't? Uh, and uh, you can get to tell us uh, via WhatsApp, you can call us. At the number shown below, uh, you can send us an audio or written message and we will share that inshallah on tonight's episode. But let's get to statistics because for me, I love statistics. I love statistics. Now, according to BBC survey done a while ago, 50% um, of the people say that yes, prison is an effective punishment and 50% 50, and 50 say no. Now, first... We have to understand, um, prison is not going to change the person's behavior or, or the criminal's behavior that goes behind bars. Um, a lot of people have this dilemma in their mind uh, that if a person does go to jail, um, supposedly he's supposed to change and he's supposed to be, become a better person. Governments has placed jail so they can get the criminals off the streets, not make them better. You know what I mean? So is, is, is the point clear enough? I need a yes or no answer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we just got the yeah. We just got the yeah. So yeah, my, my point is clear, alhamdulillah. Uh, but uh, th th there are actually five uh, generally accepted goals uh, of sentencing. Now first we have a retribution, deterrence, restoration, and rehabilitation. And the first three are, uh, you know, they're... they're accompanied uh, or they're primarily accompanied with uh, incarceration uh, so change can all right now we all know that individuals who, cr who commit crime uh, create what's known as a social debt now if, if you've ever been called by a tax collecting agency uh, and uh, you have a debt on you uh, how is that debt paid back it's paid back by a penalty and that penalty is you going to jail. Not you guys, but the person who committed the crime goes to jail. That's how the person pays that debt, the social debt, if you will. That being said, there is no credible research uh, showing that punishment in general is an effective way to reduce individuals' risk of repeating the criminal behavior in the future. Actually, the opposite is true. When a low-risk individual goes to jail, and if, for example, if, uh, if, if a person you know, goes to rob a simple uh, you know, gas station, you know, rob some candy or whatever, uh, you know, I don't think you, get, you go to jail for candy, but you know, probably they take your name anyways. But yeah, I mean, simple, something simple, like pickpocketing or whatever. When you go to jail and they put you next to someone like a rapist or a murderer or you know a, a bank robber, that influence of you being next to someone when they talk, when they ask you, and before they ask you, they, they do a lot of stuff to you. You know, you're gonna you're gonna come out someone different. You're gonna come out either very violent uh, or very scarred from the stuff they do to you. Uh, but uh, so that just increases the level uh, of criminal behavior that the low-risk individual will actually do after they come out. But we have a very nice segment for you guys today, and it's called Ask the Public. So let's go see what the public has to say about tonight's question. Take us away. I don't think that prison is, is the right way to rehabilitate people because you're putting criminals in a place with other criminals where they can learn how to do more crime. Why? Well, basically, I think it's to correct their behavior and things like that, you know, just to give them a chance in life and things like that. Yeah, that was, uh, that was a nice 30 second 
uh, break. But yeah, these guys actually mentioned something nice because uh, they just uh, said what I said. Uh, that uh, prison isn't effective that much because you're putting someone uh, who is low risk uh, with someone who is high risk. And then that person who actually pickpockets, now you can rob a bank thanks to the guy in jail. Uh, but uh, going back, so prisons uh, are an important uh, part of our response to crime, uh, but not for the reason uh, that many people believe. As I mentioned earlier, they provide a reasonable uh, way of punishment uh, for offenders. But uh, this shouldn't be confused with the strategies that need to be placed uh, for the offenders. Now, a lot of people think that, you, you know what, if, if a person uh, does create, commit a crime um, and he does go to jail, uh, that period of him going to jail is going to correct his, his, his manners, correct uh, his way of thinking, and he won't commit the crime in the future. Uh, and that's a very important point because a lot of people think it doesn't. Now, what are the alternatives? What are the alternatives? I think we're getting a few text messages, uh, but we'll get them on the screen soon, inshallah. Now, uh, what are some, some of the alternatives? One is to rely less on the incarceration and more on research-based methods proven to actually work for the betterment and the rehabilitation of the criminals. We're not saying that, you know what, instead of putting them to prison or uh, the, the suitable punishment, take them to mental institutions in Iraq, we call them shama'iya, but you know, in the world they call them mental institutions. Uh, but uh, what we're trying to say that there is a national institution of corrections that has put together a great deal uh, of information about evidence-based practices shown to actually reduce the risk of reoffense. This is actually very important and very important to actually consider because these essential points here uh, tell us that simply incarcerating someone does not really change behavior. It simply drives it underground and makes people more persistent about hiding their crimes from others. And that's actually true. Because when you, you, you do go to jail, you, you tend to learn a lot of stuff uh, of hiding your identity. If, if, if you're not a professional criminal, you get to hide their identity. But what do we need to do instead of uh, is, is changing the offender's uh, thoughts? We need to change their thoughts. Uh, we need to change their feelings and beliefs that contribute to criminal behavior. But we just have received a text message from uh, Jumana from Tanzania. She says, my second cousin went to jail uh, for robbery and after... Yeah, he got out, he robbed again and went back, uh, lol. Guess he didn't learn his lesson, okay? Uh, what a nice cousin you have. All right, thank you for joining us tonight, uh, Jumana from Tanzania. Um, uh, right there, th th that's, that's, that's another point uh, to prove my point uh, regarding that, you know, jail isn't uh, the best alternative. We're not saying don't put people in jail. Absolutely not. Put them in jail, but alongside jail, there needs to be a solution. We just mentioned that. The National Institution of Corrections, they brought information, I'll repeat that. The National Institution of Correction, they brought together information um, about evidence-based practices, uh, and they're saying in that, what we need to do to offenders is change their thoughts, their feelings, and beliefs that contribute to criminal behavior. One very promising way to do that uh, is through the Cognitive Behavioral Treatment, CBT, uh, which essentially helps offenders change their thinking. Uh, this is, for me, I believe this is a, a, a very wonderful way uh, to actually change their behavior. So in return, uh, they get, they, it, it leads to positive change in behavior when they feel like the, uh, the, the pro-social behaviors, uh, they are more likely to engage uh, in, uh, in, in those behaviors as well. And if, for example, if you talk to someone about contributing to society instead of making crime, instead of you know, uh, telling them how to grow their personality, 
telling them how to actually become a person who can benefit society. And we do remind everyone to call us tonight and contribute in our show tonight and answer the question, is prison an effective punishment? Um, so, and, and honestly, um, I'm going to sentence you guys to jail because you guys aren't sending and we're only Jumana uh, is, is being set free. All of you are going to jail because you, you guys are not. I'm just kidding. Uh, but, you know, you actually have to call in and let us know what you guys think. Because uh, we're trying to find out why is prison or is prison an effective punishment for those who commit crime? Um, so, now, th that's enough uh, for incarceration and, and CBT. We have another segment for you, a new segment for you, uh, and a lot of new segments, you know. Hashtag LNT is growing, baby. It's growing. And tonight... We have our very dear friend and guest, uh, Sheikh Osama al attar who is the expert for tonight, and telling us and answering the question for tonight as the expert. So let's go see what he has to say. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, wa sallallahu ala muhammad wa ala alihi al-tayyibin al-tahirin. Is prison an effective punishment? In today's world, people are put into prisons, but they are not given any educational value. And such, when they go to the prison, they come out and they find it extremely difficult to find a job. They find it extremely difficult to find a residence. In some countries in the world, a credit rating is required before you can find residence, you find a job, they ask you for a resume, they ask for experience. And for a person who just come out of prison, many countries unfortunately do not provide the resources required such an individual can start a new life. So what may end up happening is this individual going back to the prison because he or she may commit a crime again. What needs to happen is the government system needs to really take a look at initiatives to prevent the causes for people getting into prison. Educational system. People need to have access to education. People need to have access to food and water. People need to have access to the health care. People need to be given support resources. Single parents, for example, must be given all the resources required for parenting, for education, financial needs, sheltering, and so on and so forth. The basics need to be provided to people. Providing these basics will minimize the criminal records of societies. That's why we find in a truly Islamic system like that of Rasulullah and Amir al there were no prisons. Even in fact, at the time of the Khulafa, there were no prison system. In fact, Imam Ali alayhi salam had prisons that were made of sugar cane where people used to break and run loose. So we really need to use prisons as educational experiences and solve the root causes for people going into them. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you very much, uh, Sheikh Nan. We do thank him. Uh, on behalf of you, dear viewers, and on behalf of hashtag LNC for joining us tonight uh, as the expert uh, for tonight's episode. And uh, what, and uh, the question is, is prison an effective punishment? We just have received an audio message from Zainab from, Zainab from the USA. What does she say? To answer tonight's question, is prison an effective way of punishment in my opinion it is you're stuck in the next god knows how many years in this tiny tiny jail cell with literally nothing no sunlight they don't take you out well in some cases they do but in many cases they don't and the food they give you is totally disgusting it's gonna make you think of what you did was it really worth spending you know the time in jail for doing something so stupid you know and there's a program here in the U.S. where uh, they take bad kids and they lock them up, I think, for about two weeks. And in the end, these kids really do end up, you know, thinking straight. It really does have an effect on them. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, 
you have a lot of information about incarceration, but we do thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, but uh, another, another person who uh, ha also has uh, a lot of information about incarceration is El Chapo. Who doesn't know El Chapo? El Chapo, uh, who is a well-known Mexican drug cartel. Uh, so back in July, yeah, this guy's like, wow. How do, you, how do you become a drug lord when you're that size? Your head's huge, man. Astaghfirullah. Look at his mustache, bro. Astaghfirullah. His head looks like a pear. I didn't want to say that, but the co-producer told me to say that. Astaghfirullah. <laughs> Baba, we can't crack jokes tonight. What are we doing? Uh, anyways, but Al Chapo, back in uh, July 2015, this guy was sentenced to jail, and um, he escaped from a 20 inch hole in the back of his cell, in the shower area the back of his cell. So uh, Al Chapo Guzman, uh, a leader of a vicish, vicious, 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 a vicious drug cartel in Mexico, uh, this guy uh, escaped through a, a ventilating system, a tunneling system, and he had to travel almost a mile in that uh, ventilating system uh, which ended up in a half built house uh, a mile away from the prison this guy well, you know he he managed to escape but you know i think they got him back uh, into prison anyways now next we have is brian larson this name might not sound familiar but if you go search on google who brian bo larson is you'll for this guy you'll find him that this guy escape prison i think i think this guy instead of actually making him a prisoner and a convict they should use him to make him uh, you know use him to to, to to help them better their security because this guy escaped 22 times from prison he went to the first time he went to prison was 1989 when he was eight uh, for petty uh, for petty theft uh, and he robbed a gas station at the age of 13 wow this guy has a record at the age of eight, petty theft. At the age of 13, uh, robbing a gas station, went to foster care. Uh, and, uh, you know, he started his long career of uh, jailbreaks in 1989 uh, when he escaped prison 14 times between 1990 and 2000. In one domestic escape in 2000, he stole a car, hot pursuit, with cops, and he ended up crashing the car, running, getting, getting out of the car and running away. Uh, I think there's a video of that on YouTube. Uh, we couldn't get it for copyrights issues, but um, so crazy. We don't even know if uh, we don't even know if if he's gonna break in, break through for for the twenty third time. Uh, but you know, he, he he was sent back to jail, uh, and you know, this guy should be given a world. Uh, Guinness World Record for, for, for 22 times breaking out of jail. We only see that in movies. Uh, but we have received another audio message from Muntadar from Canada. What does Muntadar say? Peace be upon you, my dear brother Ahmed. Peace be upon you as well. you're doing well. And in order that I don't take too much of your time, I'll go straight to answering your question, which is concerning. Uh, prison being a good form of punishment uh, in my belief and I believe as well in the belief found in the Islamic literature in the prophetic traditions that no um, it is not a positive form of punishment for there are other ways in order for us to in order for an individual to repent his sins the way that it is dealt here in the West the way that prisons are dealt is not really a positive way to enforce said punishments for I believe that there are other ways and maybe in a different discussion we can consider the other ways since I was told I only have less than a minute so assalamu alaikum thank you very much brother Muntadar from Canada uh, for joining us tonight uh, and our very dear friend from Canada uh, Muntadar Al Haddad for joining us uh, tonight on tonight's question now once again we do remind viewers in the last uh, couple of minutes of tonight's episode we have three to five minutes left um, uh, to call in and let us know what you guys think. Now, the third segment for tonight, uh, inshallah, is about um, you know getting the viewpoint of uh, Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam 
uh, and what they have said in, in this regard. Now, uh, also, uh, if, if you're wondering uh, why the red lights behind me and why am I wearing black and uh, why we didn't crack jokes tonight. Uh, tonight is the martyrdom of our seventh Imam. It's the eve of the martyrdom. Tomorrow is the martyrdom uh, of Imam Musa al kazim peace and blessings be upon the seventh Imam, uh, ninth infallible of Ahl Bayt alayhim salam. Uh, honestly, beautiful shrine, beautiful. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability to go and visit his shrine. But um, Imam Musa al kazim what can we say about him? Uh, this individual was in prison for the majority of his life. Uh, you know, for someone to be in prison, uh, not knowing when daylight is or nighttime is, uh, being behind bars for 20 plus years, oh my God. You know, that picture is actually making it seem like he, he, he's living in a nice cell. Imam Musa al kazim lived in a prison tens of feet below ground. And, you know, it's, it's, it just breaks the heart when we try uh, to mention uh, the time he spent and the torture and oppressions that he under, underwent in prison uh, by the Abbasid Caliphs. Imagine... Iron locking on your feet 24-7. Imagine losing track of what, when uh, it is daytime and when it's nighttime. Imagine the only treatment you get is cruelty. Imagine through all of that, you are alone. We are incapable of imagining that. Because honestly, it's, it's, it just breaks the heart for someone that you, you know that had to go through that. But honestly, the Apostle of Allah had to go through that uh, only because of jealousy for power. Uh, that Imam Musa al-Kazim alayhi salam. A lot of people were, were, might ask, you know what, you're talking about imprisonment. Uh, and is it a good punishment? Why are you talking about al-Kazim? Imam al-Kazim alayhi salam. Imam al-Kazim was imprisoned for absolutely no reason other than being quiet in Medina. He was exiled to Baghdad uh, and uh, imprisoned for over 20 years uh, under harsh uh, punishment. Now, the only thing that Imam al kazim al -Islam, I would like to share a story before uh, we go uh, and we end tonight's episode. Uh, one time, they tried to see if the Imam would fall uh, for their you know, deviation or fall for them. So they sent a dancer, a belly dancer, to the Imam alayhi uh, salam, to prison, to see if the Imam would get seduced by her, if she can seduce the Imam. Uh, and uh, what happened is, when they sent her down there, a couple of hours later, they came back, they came back to see her, to, to, to see what's going on, and they saw her worshipping behind the Imam. So when they, took her to, 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 to see. She said, you told me this guy was, you know, he, he, he was deceived. He, he, he wasn't a Muslim and I, he, he ended up being the most pious individual I've ever seen in my life. And he changed her life. So imagine what the Imam could have done to the hearts of millions of the Shia around him. But eventually he was poisoned by the Abbasid Caliphs. Uh, and uh, it's... it's uh, Insha'Allah, none of you would have to go through prison. Because honestly, uh, it's uh, it's pretty bitter. And you know, you'll take the advice of Ahmed Ali on hashtag NNT in the late night talk, and think twice before you do anything. That's it for tonight, guys. Uh, and don't forget to watch us live every other day from Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday. 10.30 Karbala time, 7.30 GMT time, and 8.30 London time. Thank you very much for joining us tonight. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.